The season of Lent is upon us in preparation for Pascha, for Easter, for remembering the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And we can participate in this through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And we can also do things more like reading more spiritual books. And one part of this, I think, is also watching movies that may be edifying, that may teach us more about the faith and to learn more about orthodoxy. People have such a bad perception about Christian movies, thinking they're all cringe and boring and the Hallmark movies. Sadly, that's a, that's a lot of Protestant evangelical movies. But now I want to share some movies that I really enjoyed and I think that you will really enjoy. And although I can't endorse every minute of these films, these are going to be miles better than watching a secular movie, especially with how subversive and how much propaganda is in modern movies. There is good in these movies. He commands that you let his people go. Commands? I will seize your prince upon yourself. Behold, the power of God. And I have with me the biggest Prince of Egypt fan ever, John. Deliver us! John, why should people watch Prince of Egypt? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked, Kyle. Let me tell you. Prince of Egypt, guys. 1998 DreamWorks magnum opus, okay? And now people have been looking back over the years, and many people agree that it may be, in fact, one of the greatest animated films of all time. All right, let's dive into it, ladies and gentlemen. It stars Val Kilmer, Sandra Bullock, Jeff Goldblum, Danny Glover, Patrick Stewart, Steve Martin, and Voldemort? Can you believe it? Soundtrack features Boys to Men, Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, and none other than the late, great Israeli pop star Afra Haza. She voices Moses' mother, Yohebit. Excuse me, I forgot to mention that the soundtrack is put together by Hans Zimmer, beautiful. It has stunning visuals, the colors pop. It's a human and relatable story of love, family, friendship, persecution, tradition, and the human spirit. Very true to the biblical narrative while making it digestible, fun, and frankly at times, very painful. Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson is one of the best movies showing the passion of the Christ. The music, everything is amazing. I use a lot of the video from the movie in a lot of my YouTube videos because it is a really good visual. It helps us to really understand everything that Christ went through. It, it, it is rated R. It is very graphic because, you know, the story of Christ is graphic. Yeah, yeah. I The biggest disclaimer, do not watch it with your kids. Uh, I was very excited when it came out. My family was very excited when it came out. I think I was in fifth or sixth grade. Uh, I watched it. It was too much, to be honest. <laughs> like it was, it was too much for me. Like I was um, not saying that you can't ball your eyes out when you're watching it, because you know, I mean, I still do it as an adult. But yeah, I was like inconsolable for days. Um, <laughs> like, why did they kill God? <laughs> like, this is awful. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. I think that one of my favorite details, Kyle, is that they have the Roman speaking Latin mm -hmm. and they yeah. have uh, the Judean speaking uh, yeah. Aramaic. Yeah, Aramaic. Yeah. So uh, I think that that's just like an awesome detail that they add in. There's something satisfying um, about hearing them converse in the language that uh, they converse historically. Yeah. <laughs>
Man of God, The Life of St. Nectarios. This is a terrific movie. Again, the soundtrack is amazing. It's, it was made in 2021, so it's very new. Just learning about the life of St. Nectarios, it was so humbling seeing that all the persecutions he had to go, go through, and even persecution within the church, it was truly, um, it, was, it was a great story. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's like incredibly edifying and inspiring, especially for people that may feel that God is not seeing them or mm. that he doesn't see their sufferings or or people that, you know, that are really good about their prayers or they're good about, uh, you know, just being like Christ-like in their, in their everyday life and in their work. Uh, I think that this just really inspire people <laughs> and it, hopefully it will remind people that God is there, he is with you, mm -hmm. and ultimately... Uh, like Christ, uh, the saints win in the end. Yes. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's it's a really well done movie. The soundtrack is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And just when you thought that it wasn't going to get any better, all of a sudden Mickey Rourke shows up. So <laughs> yeah, that was so surprising. Yeah, I was I was like <laughs> yeah. I was like that guy looks a lot like Mickey Rourke. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, that's Mickey Rourke. Okay, yeah. wow. Okay, here we are. Uh, yeah, another, I think that that one would be an easier one to dive into for someone who isn't yes. orthodox or is newly orthodox. Mm -hmm. This movie, The Island, it's a really good movie, but it's definitely not for everyone. It's a Russian movie. It's about a monk in his life. It is very extreme seeing, I would say he's a fool for Christ. It's a very interesting story. What, what would you say, John, about this movie? Yeah, I think that if I was coming into it, because as somebody that comes from a Protestant background, and if I hadn't come into orthodoxy or hadn't spent time in orthodoxy, mm -hmm. I would be off-put by it. I just, it can be very off-putting. I think that there's cultural context to like Russia mm -hmm. and then of course there's just like orthodox practice and tradition especially like as you said the fools for Christ. Yeah. Um, which are an awesome thing. Um, mm -hmm. Right? Uh, a, a type of saint. But yeah, if you don't have any background or, or context it, it can be really like Whoa, yeah, what is going it on? is an amazing story. The music, the videography, everything in the movie is really good. And it leaves you just thinking about the movie. Um, just seeing how everything providentially worked out. So definitely consider watching it. Yeah, and to just like to piggyback off of that and what I was saying earlier, I think that it'll challenge a lot of people's presuppositions about what they think a christian movie is supposed to look like yeah especially here in the west you know yeah. where you know it's like uh dj had it all until one day he <laughs> yeah, tripped on a rock and then god said <laughs> you're gonna get humble buddy you know like it's it's yeah. just it's not that yeah it's very different yeah don't leave me here alone you trust this man with my life, Excellency. My beautiful girlfriend showed me this movie, Joseph, King of Dreams, because she's always had a strong connection to the story of Joseph. And I watched this movie, and I'm like, wow, this is really good. If you like Prince of Egypt, you're gonna like this movie. Now, I actually like this movie better than Prince of Egypt, even though the, the quality isn't as good. I really love the story of Joseph. I, I love both movies. But if you like Prince of Egypt, definitely watch this movie if you want to learn about the story of Joseph. Joseph is a type of Christ in the Old Testament. It's important to know about these Old Testament stories. Where Are You Adam is a documentary that follows a certain monastery on Mount Athos, which is the center of Orthodox Christianity. Monasticism has always been super important in the history of Christianity. 
Now, we see the lifestyle of these monks. We see this beautiful imagery of the monastery, these beautiful icons. You can go watch the trailer for yourself. It's like 4K beautiful shots. Now, when I saw this movie, I didn't realize that it's very, very hard to actually watch the movie. They only have it at selected theaters if you're requesting it. While I'm here, I wanted to uh, just mention a couple honorable mentions, okay? The Ten Commandments and Ben-Hur, all right? Now, for some of you younger folk, it's not like I'm really that old, but for people that are really young, they may not have heard of these movies. Ben-Hur came out in 1959, whereas Ten Commandments came out in 1956, so only three years between them. But funny enough, they both star Carlton Heston, who is, if you've not seen him before, the blueprint for Giga Chad, and uh, Yul Brynner plays Pharaoh in the Ten Commandments, and he's uh, sort of the... Well, I, I guess he's just sort of a Slavic Giga Chad. Um, and it's a very different take from the Prince of Egypt, I would say, uh, in respect to uh, uh, the Ten Commandments. And it follows Moses all the way up to his death at the site of the Promised Land. Uh, so, whereas the Prince of Egypt cuts us off, of course, at the climactic moment that they cross the uh, the Red Sea after he parts it. Um, and I think that it's both of them are very important cultural works. Uh, they have two very iconic moments in cinematic history when uh, Charlton Heston parts you know the Red Sea playing Moses and the chariot race that of course Charlton Heston also uh, undergoes as uh, or playing the role of Ben Hur. Hur specifically is actually a novel that was originally written in 1880 by the Union General Lew Wallace, okay? And get this, it was actually a record-breaking bestseller uh, that was eventually only overtaken by Gone with the Wind. And it was blessed by Pope Leo XIII. Not that it really needed his blessing, but obviously it made waves around the world, okay? Now, film, of course, uh, is an adaptation of this novel, and it tells the story of a, Ju a Judean nobleman forced into Roman slavery, uh, wrongfully, uh, and it is told in parallel with the gospel accounts of Jesus' life, uh, ministry, and then crucifixion, uh, and of course, resurrection. So, Ben-Hur is filled with anger, he's wanting revenge, uh, but eventually, without spoiling too much, comes to see the crucifixion of Christ, and uh, that eventually leads him to joining the early church. So uh, it's a great movie, I think, that adds like a sort of uh, protagonistic, heroic uh, element to uh, uh, you know the gospel story that we're all very familiar with and that we love very much. So uh, thanks for letting me share my thoughts on that. <laughs>